Welcome to the finale of the worst Madden 24 rebuild I have done on this channel where I started with a fantasy draft where I took the worst available players at every single position. We started as a 50 overall, but now we're up to an 86 overall team and last season we actually made the playoffs. We did lose in the wild card round, but I think that's going to be a good spot to really start the finale for this series because you really can't have a series go on forever and I feel like after seven seasons most of the team has been completely overhauled so we should be able to make a Super Bowl push in this episode but we get to start in this offseason where we have some decisions to make and the first one we have to make is wide receiver Max Johnson who does not have a lot of interest in coming back because we don't have a great head coach win percentage if I bump that up I really can't afford anything else and I think we're going to go and offer him this contract. I really like the rest of our team. We may have to clear up some cap space in other areas. But we're going to offer him this five-year deal. And is he going to take that? No, he will not. So we're going to lose our wide receiver one. Obviously, that leaves us with a bit of cap space for this offseason. So that was going to kind of be our only move we can make. But we are going to take the fifth-year option on Ethan Collins, our outside linebacker. But from there, I'm going to let everyone else go into free agency. So the only real option we had was to accept the fifth year option on Ethan Collins because we failed to bring back Max Johnson. How much is a franchise tag? $34.4 million. All right, well, we're not going to do that. Even without him, I feel like our offense is not completely awful. Tyler Scott is not a great wide receiver one. He's definitely more of a wide receiver two. So we'll look for a new wide receiver one. But we do have Randolph, who is, I believe, coming off just his first season in the league. I have been slowly building the defense up the last few seasons, and I am finally really happy with where it's at right now. Henley is probably our oldest player, considering everyone else is auto-generated. But we are a really young defense, and we just are coming off a playoff berth, so we're going to just get better on that side. Now, just in case I'm not super active in free agency, I wanted to show you guys the reason I would not be that active. That's because we have three first round picks and one of them is the fourth overall pick that we got from Cincinnati. And believe it or not, I actually managed to keep wide receiver Max Johnson. I went and looked at the draft class and there was not a lot of talent at receiver, so I really did not feel comfortable drafting a new wide receiver one. So I went ahead and used what little cap space we had to just bring him in. Now with the NFL draft, I have traded our number four overall pick and our 21st overall pick to the Cleveland Browns in exchange for the number two overall pick. And the reason I did that is for left tackle Xavier Sherman out of Oklahoma with A awareness, A impact block, A pass block, A run block. Projected in the top five is a top five talent. He will be our new cornerstone left tackle. We'll probably move the other guy over to right tackle, but obviously a hidden dev trade. Then with our other first round pick, we're actually going to trade it to the Rams and pick up a first rounder for next year and a second rounder for this year. That's the main part of this trade. And with that pick we just got from the Rams, we're actually going to take middle linebacker Paul Miller. Now, I understand this might be a bit of a reach because he is not projected to go until round three, but he has round one to two talent. And then he has B tackle, A zone coverage, A awareness, has great speed and acceleration. So Paul Miller, Miller will be a Viking, but he is going to be a normal depth trait. That is actually unfortunate. With our other second round pick, we're going to take a backup lineman in Larry Pierre. I understand it's ridiculous to take backup players right now, but we're really young enough at every single position right now on defense and even most of the positions on offense where I really can't expect to take starters here. So we're going to take center Larry Pierre, but he will be a hidden dev trait for us. With our third round pick, we're just going to take the best player available, which just happens to be another lineman. So left guard Matthew Herbert, welcome to Minnesota with another hidden dev trait. From there, I just allowed the computer to pick the rest of the draft, but I am really happy with our left tackle that we took with the number two overall pick. He's going to come in as an 80 overall, but I think the rest of the class went really well too. We got a 73 overall middle linebacker. Unfortunately, he is not a hidden dev trait, but we did get a 73 overall center and a 74 overall guard with a hidden dev trait, a 68 overall left end, a 68 overall running back, a 67 overall quarterback, a 67 overall safety, and a 62 overall right end. I actually looked at drafting Devontae Parks in the fourth round, so it's kind of weird to see the computer ended up doing it anyway in the fifth round. I really thought the left tackle that we took at 80 overall was going to be the highest rate of player in the class, but there was apparently a generational running back in Juan Tompkins out of USC who comes in as an 85 overall. Here is the official offense for season eight of this franchise rebuild. And right now with his boost, Jimmy Edwards is a 99 overall quarterback. I am excited for this season and I'm really hopeful we can at least get back to the playoffs. 
there are no new pieces starting on defense but our defense was not bad last season we actually held the cowboys only 17 points in the playoffs but we couldn't get it done offensively and now we get to set the season goal for the year and i've been setting seven wins the last few years but this year we're gonna make it to make the playoffs and at the midway point of the season we are sitting at four and three and second in the division we are second in offensive points per game but number 26 in defensive points per game Hopefully we can turn that around before the end of the season. Last year we managed to make the wild card before getting bounced out. Hopefully it goes better this year. Well, the Bears actually collapsed after the midway point. They finished 9 and 8 on the year as we finish 11 and 6 and win the division. And Jimmy Edwards had an absolutely stupid season. 4400 yards, 39 touchdowns to only two interceptions. Running the ball, we did not get a lot of rushing touchdowns apparently. Casey Hatchett 800 yards but only two scores. Jimmy Edwards ran in for a couple, Rashawn Carr got two, and Devontae Parks got five. But down here, Nathan Hicks, our backup tight end, ran in for seven touchdowns. So I imagine he was lining up at fullback, receiving Max Johnson 1,400 yards and 16 touchdowns on his brand new massive contract. Carlos Jackson 895 yards and seven scores. Lloyd Randolph got three, Julian Poole got three, Casey Hatchett got three, and Tyler Scott came away with five. Over on defense, Henley led the team in tackles again. In sacks, that goes to Kenny Spencer, who came away with 10. And interceptions, Ladarius Slate got three on the year. Jimmy Edwards is going to have a chance to win MVP this season because he led the league in passing yards. Did he lead it in touchdowns? No. That goes to Jordan Love in Jacksonville, who threw 41 scores but only four interceptions. He might actually come away with the MVP award. Interceptions goes to Mac Jones, who is now in Philadelphia, and he threw 18 picks this year. Running the ball, it looks like it's going to be Kenneth Walker with the most yards and most touchdowns goes to Brees Hall with 19. Receiving most catches goes to Garrett Wilson, who is a Ram. In yards, it goes to Devontae Smith in Seattle, and touchdowns goes to Justin Jefferson in Las Vegas. We managed to get into the playoffs as the number two seed with an 11 and six record. So the NFC is apparently not very strong this year, but our first game is against the Washington Commanders. And we don't get to jump in this time because this game was never even close. The final score is 28 to 10 and we're headed on to the divisional round of the playoffs. Now you can see how the rest of the wildcard round ended up playing out and you can see that we get to take on a divisional rival in the divisional round as we get to take on the Detroit Lions. I realize now that I did not explain before the last game that we only jump in if it's close at the end like we did in the last episode with the wildcard game against the Cowboys. So that is just how I pretty much am going to handle playoff games in this series. However, this game goes in the exact opposite direction of the last one. We end up losing in this round of the playoffs 38-24, so it looks like Josh Allen and the Lions will be headed to the conference championship game. However, that does mean we get to do another offseason in this video, but the Dallas Cowboys are now back-to-back -back Super Bowl champions. The NFL MVP apparently goes to Anthony Richardson. Last season, they defeated the Chargers. This year, they come in and defeat the Dolphins. Well, this offseason might really suck. We have about $35 million in cap space, but neither one of our top two corners want to come back. Ladarius Slate has no interest in re-signing and apparently is negatively impacted by everything. We'll see if he takes this three-year offer. I highly doubt it, though, but he's going to be playing for a new team, most likely. I would really like to keep our starting right tackle in Jalen Humphrey, so we're going to bump up that offer just a bit to a three-year deal and we'll see if he takes that. Yes, he will. So we at least get to return him. Our running back, Casey Hatchett, would like to come back. So we're going to offer him a two-year deal. Will he take that? Yes, he will. I believe it is finally time to let Tyler Scott walk away from this team. He's 29 years old and 80 overall. But he would currently be the wide receiver three behind Lloyd Randolph and Max Johnson. But I would like to bring back our defensive tackle in D'Angelo Spruce. So let's see if we can actually get him back. And yes, we will. But from here, everyone else will be heading for agency, including Dayon Henley. And I know he's been leading our team in tackles, but he is slowly regressing. He's already down to a 76 overall. So if he's one of the better options available in for agency, we might bring him back. But I am still just devastated we're going to lose Ladarius Slate. What would his franchise tag be? 28.7. So no, we're not going to be bringing him back. I'm trying to free up just a bit more cap space for us this offseason. So we're going to restructure quarterback Jimmy Edwards. And it's going to free up 18.3 million. And it looks like we still have plenty of cap space in the next couple seasons. 
And with that freed up cap space, we brought in a couple new guys. We brought in Malcolm Garner, a new defensive back. I really tried to bring back Ladarius Slate, but the Dolphins were offering a lot of money or he was super interested in going to Miami. So I went ahead and just let him walk. So we do bring in Malcolm Garner. We also bring in defensive tackle Keanu Benton. All right, now that we're at the NFL draft portion of this offseason, we have the number 21 and number 27 pick in the first round, but there is a player that I want that's going to go really early. We're here at the fifth pick in the draft, and if we look at our draft board here, we can go in and see there is a receiver that I am really, really interested in, and wide receiver Vince Riley out of USC. He is a catch in traffic, catching deep route and release. He does only have solid speed and decent acceleration, but I think he's much more of a jump ball receiver. So I want to see if we can trade for this pick to bring him in. Just out of curiosity, I want to see what the get offers button shows us with the Jets draft pick. A uh, first round pick in the next three years, that's a little bit too rich for me. How about a first round pick this year, a second round pick next year and this year and the year after that apparently, and a couple third round picks? And we get to keep the 21st overall pick from the Rams? I know this is a lot to trade, but we're going to go ahead and make this. And now that we own the number 5 overall pick, wide receiver Vince Riley, you are a Minnesota Viking with a hidden dev trait. That is the thing I was most terrified of. Had he been a normal dev trait after all we just gave up, I would have cried. And with the other first round pick we had, we're going to trade it to Philadelphia, pick up a first rounder next year, a second rounder this year, and I really don't care about the 6th and 7th round draft picks. And then with that pick, we are actually going to reach a bit and take outside linebacker Peter Hill out of UCF, but we're actually going to be moving him to middle linebacker with his great speed, elite acceleration, A to C awareness, A man coverage, B play rec, and our middle linebacker scheme fit is a pass coverage type, which is exactly what Peter Hill is, and he will have a hidden dev trade. In the third round with pick number 23, we're going to take defensive back Dante Harbour out of Auburn, a 21-year-old that will have a normal dev trade. I haven't really been making picks late in the draft, but I did like this guy. Outside linebacker Dion Truman. I believe this is just pretty much a case of best player available. So Truman, welcome to Minnesota, and it's a normal dev trade. All right, maybe not the best player available. Well, I think it was a pretty risky trade up, but I think it worked out. Wide receiver Vince Riley is going to come in as a 79 overall, 90 speed, 86 catching, 85 catching traffic. Doesn't have the best route running, but I think he's going to develop pretty nicely. And with a second round pick, we took outside linebacker Peter Hill, who comes in as a 73 overall outside linebacker. But like I said, we are going to be moving him over to middle linebacker, and we'll see if his rating actually improves at all. So let's see if that actually goes up. No, it actually goes down. He goes down to a 72, but still a hidden dev trait, so he's probably still going to be playing for us. Then we got a 73 overall corner, a 63 overall outside linebacker. That was definitely not the best player available, considering almost everyone else is a higher rating than him. By the way, Adrian Callahan, a 70 overall receiver, a 68 overall safety, a 67 overall outside linebacker, 65 overall running back, 68 overall receiver, and a 62 overall safety. And the highest rated player in the draft ends up being an 80 overall receiver that went with the number two overall pick to Baltimore. I did consider trading up and taking Dom Watson, but I figured it would be a bit cheaper to just take Vince Riley, who I thought was going to be nearly just as good, and it turns out he is. Here is going to be your starting offense for Season 9 of this franchise rebuild. Quarterback Jimmy Edwards, now a superstar X-Factor dev trait, along with Carlos Jackson. We now find out that Sherman is a superstar dev trait left tackle, and Max Johnson up to a superstar dev trait at receiver. Now on defense, there are a couple new faces this time around. Keanu Benton was brought in at defensive tackle. We lost Ladarius Slade, so we bring in Garner to be our DB number 2, and Pearson now moves in to be our DB number 1. And then we also brought in Peter Hill to be our second middle linebacker. Once again, it is time to set our season goal for the year, and it's once again going to be to just make the playoffs. This might be the best team we have had in this rebuild so far. We are 6-1 at the halfway point, with the number one offense in points per game, scoring 32.5 points a game, and the defense is ranked number seven in points per game. We have a real chance here to finish as the number one seed here in season nine to try to get a Super Bowl victory. So let's jump to the end of the season and figure out where we finish. Unfortunately, we do not end up as the one seed. We don't even win the division. We finish 12 and five along with the Chicago Bears and apparently they somehow win the division in some sort of tiebreaker. We finish as the number three offensive points per game and the number 14 defense. So we're still pretty solid. 
And Jimmy Edwards once again had a really, really good year. 4,600 yards, 42 touchdowns, and 6 interceptions. On the ground, Rashawn Carr ran for over 1,000 yards and got 6 touchdowns. Receiving Max Johnson, 18 receiving touchdowns and 1,300 yards. But Carlos Jackson with over 100 receptions, 1,200 yards, and 10 scores. And rookie Vince Riley came in with 6 touchdowns. So we had a pretty solid season. Over on defense, Carson Clifford's going to end up leading the team in tackles. In sacks, that goes to Tyree Wilson. In interceptions, goes to Keith Barker and Cecil Pearson, who both came away with three. Jimmy Edwards had a really good year, but Anthony Richardson was absolutely insane. With over 5,000 passing yards, he also was going to lead the league in touchdowns, or at least tied with Jimmy Edwards with 42. And most interceptions is the second-year quarterback in Vegas with 14 interceptions. Running the ball, Kenneth Walker got 1,500 yards, but the most touchdowns once again goes to Brees Hall. And receiving the most receptions is going to go to Morris Willis, an auto-generated player in Green Bay. Most yards is Garrett Wilson, and most touchdowns is Max Johnson, tied with Nate Nelson. If you've been watching this series from the start, you know the Falcons are an absolutely insane dynasty because they managed to grab Patrick Mahomes. They've appeared in four Super Bowls, and I believe won three of them, but they are going to be our first opponent in this wildcard round. But we will get to jump into this game with a minute 37 to go. It's a third and 10 from our own 30. All tied up at 21. Edwards will drop back. It's a screen to the outside. That's caught by Hatchet to the edge. Makes one man miss, but he'll get brought down to bring up a fourth and two. And we will have to punt the ball away to the Falcons and give it to Patrick Mahomes. The punt is sent deep. Let's see what kind of field position they're going to get here. And it's going to bounce into the end zone and go for a touchback. So here comes Patrick Mahomes now from his own 20-yard line in a shotgun set. A minute 23 to play. We do have all three timeouts. It's a quick throw to the outside. Let's go. And immediately brought down a loss of two. Now in a second and 12. Mahomes back in shotgun again. Under a minute to play here in the game. He'll drop back and he throws off his back foot. But that one's going to fall incomplete. Now a third and 12. We have a chance to win this game still. On third down, it'll be a handoff up the middle, and will he get the first down? Nowhere close to it on fourth and seven. Now they will punt it away. We have two timeouts remaining, so we'll have to see if we actually go for the win or just play for overtime. The punt is sent deep. He's going to field this at about the 34-yard line with a fair catch. So now out comes our franchise quarterback, Jimmy Edwards, to try and win the game right here. 43 seconds to go. Back in shotgun, he'll take the snap and looks to pass. They're bringing a blitz, but he goes over the middle, and that will just straight up fall incomplete, and Atlanta has an injury, but now it's a second and 10. He's going to line up in shotgun again. I believe that's Hatchet in the backfield with him. 40 seconds to go. He'll drop back. They're bringing a blitz. He's going over the middle, and that is once again incomplete. With 37 seconds to play now with a third and 10. Still at around 34-yard line. Edwards will drop back to the pass one more time. Roll into the outside. He needs to get rid of it. Finally, Will, and that's going to get intercepted. And Atlanta's going to have great field position here at the 30-yard line. Well, I hate to be super negative about this, but I'm pretty sure that's going to wrap things up here. I imagine Atlanta will just run the ball a couple times, so unless we can force a turnover as he's breaking tackles and gets a 10-yard gain. Atlanta calls a timeout with 11 seconds remaining. Tied up at 21, we would then burn a timeout to try to ice the kicker. The snap of the hold, the kick is away, and it is good. They have a three-point lead with eight seconds to go. Let's see if we can get anything absolutely insane on the kick return here. They send it deep. We will field this at about the one-yard line. He's going to bring it up across the 20 and get met at about the 25-yard line. So with four seconds to go, our season on the line. I imagine we're just going to see how far Jimmy Edwards can throw this ball. He'll drop back to the pass, and it's going to be a quick throw to the outside. What the hell attempt was that? We're going to go ahead and get bounced in the wild card round. So we lose 24 to 21, and now we will go into our 10th and final season of this franchise rebuild. And this season's Super Bowl goes to the Kansas City Chiefs defeating the Arizona Cardinals 35 to 24. Lamar Jackson is the Super Bowl MVP. And the NFL MVP for the second year in a row goes to Anthony Richardson. And real quick, I want to show this because I apparently did not notice this. Lamar Jackson won one, two, three, four, five NFL MVPs in a row. That is absolutely absurd. He's won six in this series. The first player up for re-signing is outside linebacker Ethan Collins. We're going to give him a six-year offer. He's an 86 overall superstar depth tray and a scheme fit for us and he will be returning. 
We are also going to be trying to bring back our tight end, Carlos Jackson. He does have a lot of interest in coming here, so we'll give him a four-year deal, and he will be returning as well. And it is now time to accept some fifth-year options. We're going to start with defensive back Cecil Pearson. We're going to go and accept his, along with safety Keith Barker. Is this going to be the draft where we had five first-round picks? I believe it is. So we're going to go ahead and take Parker Gordon as well. Almost called him Gordon Parker. And no, we only had three first-round picks apparently in this draft, unless I'm missing some here. How about bringing back our starting center and Joe Sambucci, an 86 overall star depth trait. He will be returning. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of cap space here, so I'm having to super low ball our middle linebacker, Carson Clifford. I doubt he's going to take that, and yeah, he's going to be testing for agency. And I would love to bring back Bradley Jordan, but he's going to be way too expensive for us, and everyone else will be walking into free agency, and I feel like we're losing some really key players here, at least some key backups. And because this will be the final season of this franchise rebuild, whether we win a Super Bowl or not, we're going to go ahead and restructure a few more contracts and kind of put this team in financial hell, but that'll be for the next coach to decide. And one of the big reasons I wanted to free up all of that cap space, I ended up freeing up to about 50 million, and it's because I wanted to bring back Keanu Benton, Carson Clifford, and Bradley Jordan, but we also added Jermaine Johnson. This year in the draft, we're going to need to be really careful because we don't have any second or third round picks to make up for blown first round picks, but we do have two first round picks, one from Philadelphia and then our own. And with that 16th overall pick that we got from Philadelphia, we're going to take defensive back Lionel Smith out of Ole Miss, and he is going to come in as a hidden dev trade. And with the other first round pick we have, we're going to take running back Brett Scruggs out of Ohio State. B ball carry vision, B break tackle, A carrying. Good speed, good acceleration, welcome to Minnesota, and he will be a hidden dev trait for us. Once I got the two first round picks out of the way, I went ahead and turned it over to the computer, but we got a 78 overall corner and a 76 overall running back in the first round, so I think we did pretty solid. We then got a 67 overall defensive tackle, a 68 overall corner, a 68 overall quarterback, a 66 overall running back, and a 69 overall receiver. For the second year in a row, the best player in the draft was a receiver, but this draft doesn't appear to be really talented. The second highest rated player is a 79, and past that, you just start to see a fall off. And now your starting lineup for the final season of this rebuild. We have three superstar X-Factors in Jimmy Edwards, Max Johnson, and Carlos Jackson. We have a superstar depth trade at left tackle, and then we also have Vince Riley, but he is injured and going to miss the first week of the season, but once he's back in, our receiving core should be pretty good. And I would say the major change on defense is that we lost Tyree Wilson, but Ford should fill in nicely there, and then Smith should be a pretty good nickel defensive back for us. And now for setting the season goal this year, I would say it is pretty obvious. It is going to be to win the Super Bowl, otherwise this entire rebuild is considered a failure, Despite the fact we've turned a 50 overall team into a Super Bowl contender, it has taken a few seasons, but we usually jump to the midway point. We're not doing that this year. We're going right to the end of the season. Well, I think most of you guys are going to be okay with this record. We finished 16 and 1. We have the number 4 offensive points per game and the number 13 defense. Who was the only team to beat us? It was not early in the season, apparently. We were kind of squeaking out some of these victories. But we end up starting this year at 14-0 before the Bears finally knock us off 7-26, but then we won back-to-back -back games to round out the regular season. Quarterback Jimmy Edwards goes for 4,700 yards, 36 touchdowns, and one interception. I would think this touchdown-to-interception ratio would be some sort of NFL record. Running the ball, Casey Hatchett ran for 700 yards and five touchdowns. Jimmy Edwards got a couple. Our rookie, Brett Scruggs, got 248 yards and eight touchdowns. I'm guessing he was more of our power back. Max Johnson was 17 receiving touchdowns. Carlos Jackson got nine. Lloyd Randolph caught three. Vince Riley caught three. Over on defense, Peter Hill actually led our team in tackles with 132. And sacks, Jermaine Johnson got eight. And interceptions, we only got two on the entire year. That is not good, but somehow we went 16 and one. Jimmy Edwards ends up leading the league in passing yards with his 4,715. Second place only by 10 yards is James Henry, but where is Anthony Richardson? Generally, he's really high up here, but he's down here with 4,100 yards, so I'm going to assume he missed a couple games. The most touchdowns goes to Nolan Johnson, a quarterback in New Orleans, and interceptions is Jaden Johnston, a quarterback in Los Angeles who threw 18. With running the ball, it looks like Kenneth Walker once again led the league in yards with 1,400. He's apparently just really consistent with that. 
touchdowns is Jonathan Taylor in Pittsburgh. And then receiving the most receptions is 123 by Kyrie Trailer in New Orleans. The most yards is also going to go to him. And most touchdowns goes to Max Johnson tied with Jackson Smith and Jigba. But now here is how the wildcard round ended up playing out. So we get to take on the six seed Seattle Seahawks for our first game of this playoff run. We have yet to make it past the divisional round of the playoffs, so hopefully we can get past that today. But unfortunately, we apparently are not going to play well in the playoffs at all. We lose this one 28-14, and I'll let you know right now, it was never even close in the second half. We went to halftime down by 7, and our offense completely fell apart in Super Sim. So I understand might be some upset people that I didn't watch any of this game, but it was never in a position for me to jump in and it be close. And what is a better way to end this franchise rebuild than with a Brown Super Bowl victory led by Super Bowl MVP Joe Burrow? Jimmy Edwards does finally capture an NFL MVP award though, and we actually win Coach of the Year. And in case you didn't catch it this entire series, I didn't make our coach Bob Soups. Unfortunately, this is where this rebuild will end up wrapping up. As you can see, we are negative $36 million in cap right now. So I don't think this team really has much of a future. I would probably have to get rid of a lot of key important players. And I think it would take a few more years for this team to be competitive again. And I think I just kind of put it all on last season and it obviously did not pay off. However, coming up from a 50 overall team that went 0 and 17 to an 89 overall team that went 16 and one, I'm going to consider this somewhat of a success. Obviously no Super Bowl really sucks, but I still think we built a really, really good team.